are getting set for uh, Arkansas Oklahoma State tomorrow. Uh, I got the baseball scrimmage coming up in about two and a half hours, but we're still glowing over uh, Arkansas beating the University of Connecticut 90 to 87 yesterday. And I have a feeling that our current guest is still glowing from that experience as well as the rest of his team is too. Mike Neighbors is on with us right now on halftime. Coach, uh, I asked this very same question when you came over for the post game interview, so I'll ask it the same again. How are you feeling right yep. now? Uh, well, I haven't slept since the last time you and I saw each other, if that gives you any indication. Uh, I was up texting and talking to all my West Coast people late into the night, and I was so jazzed up, watched the replay of the game uh, as Bowen was resting peacefully at night, and then my East Coast people all woke up. So um, I, we're just counting this as one big day, Phil, but. Uh, Still just elated for our kids and our fans and uh, everybody that's uh, helped us get this thing to where it was to, to make that not happen. I mean, it's it was special, as you've probably been talking about and as you called on your show uh, last night. It just had a special feeling all day long. So, I mean, there's a couple ways to look at this that we can talk about. One is the game in and of itself, which was just college basketball at its best, I think, yeah. from both sides. And then there's the, the bird's eye perspective of sort of like, you know, what this means for the program, for your team right now. So let's get into the game itself. And I just have to tell okay. you that for watching Chelsea Dungy for these last three years, and as good as she has been, she took her game to another level yesterday. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's you, you hear this talked about in all sports. That's what the great ones do. They show up in the biggest moments and the biggest when the biggest performance is needed, the biggest performers show up. And I thought she had that look in her eye from early on in the in the day, in the game, but she's also had it for the last couple of weeks. You know, she's been really good in practice. She's probably had her best three weeks of practice that I've known her as a player, um, and it carried over. And then, then the, the moment caught up, and then they – then they kind of poked the bear a little bit. You know, one of their kids yelled when she blocked her shot one time, and they were talking a little bit. And that, that, that works with some people. It doesn't work with Chelsea. It just drives her the other direction. What did you see in your players' faces yesterday throughout the game as, you're, as it becomes completely obvious that they're not just hanging with UConn, but that you were setting the pace and that they were having trouble guarding you? And you might have seen in their eyes – maybe a little bit more confidence as each minute wore on. What, what was it like in the huddle and at halftime with your team and, and then when you talked to them in, in, during the second half? Just just that all those tough losses we've had have paid off. You know, there wasn't any panic. There wasn't any moment they got too big or too small. Uh, they've learned the value of one possession the hard way. Uh, and as a result, I, I think that's what you saw. You saw a lot of calmness and a lot of composure um, and and just – them staying together. We were a close group yesterday because we had some kids that were out with, you know, some COVID protocols. So uh, we were a little bit closer group than before. And, and you can see that carry over. Uh, tell me about Amber Ramirez. Uh, I felt like one of the things that was tough to, to, you know, the last couple of games was getting her the open looks. And Kentucky, and Connecticut is so good at, uh, at guarding the three. And you could see how they would extend their defense. But that did not keep Amber from – from getting some looks and, and, and you guys looking for her. I hope you got disconnected. We, got disconnected. Back. Uh, we lost Mike for a moment, so we'll get we'll get him back here. Yeah, Ramirez scored 22 yesterday on 5 of 10 shooting from long range. Not only did she not hit a three-pointer for the last two games, she didn't even get an attempt against Georgia. That's how good the Bulldogs uh, defended her. And, again, it's like I mentioned earlier in the show – a, a, a team that defends like UConn, you really only have. Bill, sorry the, about that. I'm back okay. with you now, brother. Y yeah, you're back with us. I, I'm talking about how, how, you know, UConn is such a good defensive team that you have to recognize that slight moment where you have the open shot or the lane yeah. to drive, and that's what made what Chelsea did so amazing. And also, you know, how, how difficult it was for Amber Ramirez the last two weeks to get open looks, and I felt like she saw those split seconds where she had the look and she had the feel, too. Yeah, well, and it's, you know, it was so great for Amber to have that game. Had a lot of distractions off the court with a sick family member. Uh, and I, I, part of it was my fault, Phil. I, I've been trying to take a little pressure off of her and not, you know, not look for as many shots. And that was the wrong thing to do. I should have relied on her more. And we had a great conversation and a great talk over the week. And 
she said, Coach, I need, I need, I need more for bass. I need to focus on this basketball so I can take my, my focus off those things. And I, I'm just so happy for her to, to do such on a big stage. You look at her games against UConn and Baylor, uh, and you know that those those performances are very, very impactful for us. And and then a large, large, uh, large part of the outcome of the game too. Hey, coach, you talked about how the the tough losses and how the players learn. How much did you learn about yourself and, and this team through those that led you to being able to overcome things to, to get the win yesterday? A, a lot. Um, I, I went and I, I spent time with – I took uh, Hunter to lunch one day and picked his brains about all the decisions he's been faced with that you never had to face in these years. I talked to Coach Musselman. I talked to Co- Colby Hale um, and, and just – other people that have been going through this thing, and I, I learned that I was doing, trying to do too much. You know, it's okay to say you don't know and just go through it with them. You know, I was second guessing not calling timeouts. I was second guessing play calls uh, and, and just talking to the kids. We had some great dialogue, and through those conversations, it just really opened up and cleared up a lot of uncertainty. And, and I think we played a lot looser. I think we were a lot freer. Uh, I know that. Uh, my preparation and our, our team preparation was so much better as a result of all of those things. How difficult was it to not have those those players and a couple of coaches there yesterday? And what's the message been to them over the last 24 hours as you go through that big win and them not being there and trying to uh, keep them involved with that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad we found out early in the day because we had a little time to prepare for it. But just – just a gut wrench when it was all over going, you can't go hug Jalen Mason who's been, who stayed here, you know, from day one and Macy Weaver and Grace and those kids who were here when we, when we, when UConn wouldn't have come to play us. And then Amber's not at the game. So, um, it was hard. I mean, it was, there's going to be some cool celebrations when we get an opportunity to get everybody back together. But, um, again, that's part of what we all knew was going to happen at some point in time this year that, you know, it's, it's going to hit us. But what I'm really proud of is that we still got to play the game uh, because of all the protocols that we've been going through and, and observing. We didn't have to cancel the game, and we didn't have to uh, be in a situation where the event wouldn't happen. And um, that we were just very fortunate for that. But it was hard not having those kids there. But on the flip side of that, I think it, it probably drew us closer together, the ones that were there, uh, knowing that, the, the bench was short, and the warm-up lines were – when we did our pregame walk, we were all kind of looking around at each other like, man, we're missing so many people. But I do think there was some benefit, plus and minus, to it for sure. Coach Mike Neighbors joining us here on Halftime. Coach, what does this victory do to a, this program moving forward? We talked about how big the Baylor victory was, and now moving into this one, this will set you moving forward so, so much and really set the tone for the rest of the season heading into 2022. I'll give you an example. I'm looking at my daily my daily to do list, and I'm going to be on y'all show. I'm going to be on with Grant, and I'm going to be on John and Zach, and I'm going to be on Sirius Radio. I'm going to be on Paul Feinbaum. Um, I'm I'm guessing that last Thursday we probably didn't have that on the plan. So that's what it does. It, it just changes the magnitude of the um, of the, the the image of our program, you know. And it's there were a lot of people watching. I don't know if you saw, like, Skylar Diggins was tweeting at our kids and the governor and Houston Nutt called me on the phone and made my night. And the stuff that Coach Pittman's doing, uh, Coach Arder's call, all of our coaches have reached out from every sport. Um, that's what it does. It, it, it verifies what you're doing. It, it motivates you to show up and get ready for Sunday against Auburn. But then, you know, you get recruits calling from all over the country. And it, it's got impact when – and that's what we – planned on when we scheduled the game um that was what that game was going to bring us win lose or draw but then when you win it and you give the kids the opportunity to, to put themselves in a situation like that it just it just compounds and keeps going and having residual effect for a long time you mentioned coach Pittman using kind of using your team as an example for how the how other programs can get moving forward and we talked about this during a commercial break it's so cool to see the community that's really built between all the programs between you and coach Musselman you and coach Pittman and everybody just supporting each other because coach there was so much support and so much congratulatories coming in for you guys last night after that huge victory well guys that's rare uh that that's not everywhere I've been at 
a number of different universities and obviously not going to single out it, but that's really rare. That is just not, doesn't happen uh, every place, uh, every time. And it starts at the top with all of our leadership and then trickles down. But there really is, you know, it, it's a motto. And But that one Razorback, and, and then today when he said, i got to come up with something cool. I mean, he's got the damn jukebox. Now he's got, uh, we all wear the same hog. I mean, I don't know who's, who, if that's just him, he's coming up with some gems over there, man. Uh, <laughs> but he just inspires me on, you know, the way he's going about it and, if we do one, if we help them get one first down next year, man, I'm going to be one proud coach. That's for sure. Before I let you go, one one last thing before I throw it back over to Phil. Um, looking forward, because obviously this is a huge victory, and let's let's relish in this victory. But how yep. can we transition this momentum into the rest of SEC play? Well, you, you do exactly what you did. You take it play by play and possession by possession. You don't let one get bigger than the other, and. You value that third one just as much as the 83rd one. Uh, and, and you have a short term. I mean, I, we're celebrating it still today. I, we're, we're going we're gonna to watch video of the game. We're going to watch a replay of it while we shoot free throws this afternoon. And when the practice is over today, that's when we're moving on to Auburn. But uh, I, I think you've got to – if you don't allow yourself to enjoy it and celebrate it as long as you physically and mentally possibly can, I think you miss out on an opportunity to – uh, to make it feel special, uh, and then turn that turn that attention to what comes up next. And for us, that'll be Auburn on Sunday. Hey, Mike, we've talked a lot since you since you got here about building the fan base. How much does yesterday help, and and how much do you hope it carries over to building that fan base for a game, a regular season game that that's not against UConn, and, yeah. and really building the brand of what you're trying to do here. Well, the first addressing the crowd yesterday for them to show up on such short notice and the the, 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 guy, the game time change and you know your seats are in the upper deck end zone and that's where people were sitting you know they didn't they didn't say oh well we're just not going to go we'll watch it on tv they still came um you know we had we, the, the, just our kids to see that with this group and they're going to go tell the stories they're the ones that tell the recruits when they get here hey when we had covid we we sold this thing out max number of tickets those stories perpetuate, and I told somebody yesterday, I said, probably, you know, we had 4,400 there yesterday. You know, maybe if, if things get going five or six years from now, there'd probably be eight or 10,000 people saying they were there. And that, that means that your program's in a good spot. They, they were entertained while they were there. And like Phil was saying at first, it was good basketball. I mean, it, there was a lot of made shots, very few turnovers, uh, momentum swings, clutch plays. Um, uh, it, uh, to me, it was it was fun to go back and rewatch because as the game's going on, you get lost in it and you don't enjoy it as much. But watching the replay uh, was really a lot of fun. Mike, let you go in a moment here, and I just it hit me when you were you're talking about seeing Coach Pittman with his thing, which is the jukebox. And I wonder, like, yeah. you don't have a jukebox, and I wonder why because you've got more CDs <laughs> and a greater music collection than anybody I know. So I mean, you've got this whole wall of music. Why not a jukebox? Because I think this would fit. It, it would have to be big. It had to be a huge jukebox to fit all my stuff. That's probably the problem. We, we, we're probably fortunate we can do it digitally now because I wouldn't have enough room. I, I'd have a hard time picking uh, what made it onto the actual jukebox. But, um, yeah, just give me a, give me a, good, uh, a good little uh, external speaker that we can jam it through and, a, and an extension cord and we go to work. All right, we we got to run, Mike. I really appreciate you jumping right. on with us. I know you, you got so many other interviews right. to do. Congrats Thanks, again, coach. and we'll see you Sunday. All right. Thank you all. See you. See you. Yeah, that's Mike Neighbors, who is, uh, got, he's got a lot of suitors that want to take him to the dance today. A lot. How many interviews was that? Like seven? Uh, he rattled off like seven, so started with the best, though. I think that's a good way to look at it. Agreed. I think that's right. And the dude hadn't slept. And I understand what that feels like, because I had to work on getting tired last night. Like, I had... Way, way too much energy. And still couldn't even get to sleep until like 1.30. Meanwhile, here's Mike, who's got more energy than Tesla. And, <laughs> you know, I can imagine he's not sleeping for two days. <laughs> 877 if you want to react to that interview. We've got Matt Zimmerman coming up in 15 minutes, so don't go anywhere.